Okay, hopefully my mic does not pick up too much background noise. I've been struggling with it lately, fighting with it, trying to get it to not pick up all this computer noise in the background. But I think it's okay when I'm talking, so I'll try to keep talking. These are my three sketchbooks that I worked in for the um, eight weeks that I was in Peter Hahn's class. I learned a ton, and in eight weeks I did a whole lot of drawing. Um, not everything in this first one is from the class. There's a couple things in here that I will probably not show you because they're from after. Uh, but about two weeks in, I needed to switch over to toned paper instead of white paper. So I just kind of used this for a bit and then uh, switched off of it. But there's a lot of exercises in here too, so it's not even that interesting to look at. Um, the first couple weeks, we just did a lot of exercises. So trying to improve line quality. This is an exercise where you draw a line with a ruler and then you go over it freehand 10 times and try to keep it as one consistent line. So you can see it looks pretty bad. I was pretty terrible at it. But it was kind of weird because I was noticing and I think Peter noticed too, like when I did my drawing of actual subjects, the line quality was a lot better. But for some reason, when I drew the exercise, it's almost like I just didn't care about it enough. So they looked worse all the time. But I still do these uh, every week, just trying to improve my uh, confidence and line quality. So they're sliding all over the place and you move them. Um, so there's lots of stuff like that. We did arcs, lines, um, circles and ellipses. Most of these are double-sided. This is just like the first week that you're seeing here. So there's a lot of pages of drawing. Um, but then you can see, yeah, like the line quality on these, which are just like really long straight lines, are a little bit better, still kind of rough, but they definitely improved by the end of the two months. So we did lots of lots of little exercises. This is the not very interesting stuff to look at, so I'll skip through it real quick. <laughs> but what's interesting is all of these exercises did uh, work towards the methodology of dynamic sketching. The way we drew the exercises we did, they all came together in the end for every subject. So um, this was kind of a texture week. We were working on rendering forms and applying texture to them, slicing them open and doing dissections. So I did a couple things, like a moon base, asteroid base, and like a, a drill, a zucchini. Um, here's a bunch of textures I did. Dark to light. These already are so much better, especially the hatching. I've gotten so much better at just from doing every day. Um, and this is fun. This is uh, organic forms. So basically you squash a circle and make a fun shape out of it. Draw a center line and then bold the line that's closest to make it kind of have some depth and add the contour lines to give it volume. And this is really applicable for drawing fish especially. You can really quickly, if you get used to drawing these things, uh, sketch fish with this kind of method. You just kind of make a head, attach a center line, and then build an organic form around it. And then once you've got a nice, nice looking form, then you can start applying texture to it like this for scales or whatever it may be. So I did a lot of those. We also did plano forms. This is much more useful in like man-made structures, of course, like cars, buildings, guns, more textures. I need to do more of those. Um, some of these early drawings of bugs that I did were actually not very good. Um, the drawings weren't that bad, but I wouldn't remember how to draw them again because my initial shapes were really messy. These aren't like memorable silhouettes. They're just kind of like a silhouette that I was seeing. So it's very round, oblong shapes. I can't remember that. One of the main goals of this was to simplify and break things down into very memorable shapes. Um, it's a lot easier to find proportion that way. Also just drawing it smaller. These are all very large drawings. And ideally, if you're just trying to find proportion, which is the goal of a drawing like this, just keep it really small and then you can do it actually better. Because you don't have to measure across such a long, long path. These are some more recent things. So yeah, I did a bunch of bugs that week. I think this is like week two. 
maybe week three, I can't remember. But these are not very memorable. Not enough information to remember. And I think that's pretty much everything for those. Then I switched over to the toned paper and really started putting in the hours. Um, but also I was getting faster at drawing. So this is uh, about three weeks, right? I finished this book. So here's uh, some more practice of rendering those organic forms. Basically you draw the form, notate where the light source is coming from, and then you know add the shadow, hatch around it. Again, this is like, seems really simple and not that interesting. But if you can do it like this, then you can do it on any subject. So that's the goal with these. Um, these are all very strangely shaped, but <laughs> also did it with um, textures. That's a fun exercise as well. But it's hard to come up with original shapes that are round like this. Let me skip ahead here. So a bunch of those in here. And then we started drawing like lots of subjects. So started with marine life. Even this is not simple enough of a shape. I could have gone simpler there. Hold this in a bit. Forgive me, these books are kind of hard to uh, show off the drawings because I drew on every other page, but I always put the rest of the pages up above like this so they don't get in my way and I can draw flat. They don't fall off the edge ever. So I have to like flip it every single time I turn the page. <laughs> And if you see any red notes, these are after I received feedback. I wrote those notes. So I can go back through and check it out again. But my goal with uh, these was kind of to start learning how to draw stuff uh, from memory. So if I didn't draw it simply enough to begin with, like this is a pretty simple shape. Still kind of hard, but a little bit better. If I didn't do that simply enough in the beginning, it was a lot harder for me to remember how to draw it the next day. So you can see I drew it from memory here with no reference. Um, and because I had done these very simple initial shapes, I can start with that and then build the rest of the details on. I believe, yeah, this is uh, the next day I did it again, different angle. So it is working to some extent. This one, not so good. <laughs> some fun sharks and things. I probably won't show every drawing in here just because there are a lot of them. Let me skip through. Oh, here's here's some pages I had some struggles with. This thing is called the Painted Frogfish. It doesn't actually swim. It has uh, evolved these crazy, like, chubby little fins that it crawls around on like a frog. And it's uh, technically an angler. It just sits in the bottom of the reef and it swallows things whole. But I, it's so... Um, I guess flaccid is a good word. It's just so like <laughs> limp um, and chubby. There's like no form to it. It's super hard to figure out where the shapes would be, what they would look like. And I couldn't figure it out until I found a video. Um, and that was a nice trick I found. If I couldn't find a good image or something, I would look for a video and then I could actually see the function of the parts, which helped me understand it a little bit better, which is ultimately the goal is understanding these things. Here's one of my favorites from this week. All these marine life were done in one week also, so it's a lot of pages of drawing. Vampire squid, pretty cool little animal. These are from memory, frogfish, fisher shark. I think I drew some cats in here, but wasn't really the correct method. I hadn't really, we hadn't covered like land animals yet. We'd only done marine animals. So I was kind of just breaking this down into like big 3D forms for all of these cats that I drew this week. So it, it wasn't actually that helpful in learning how to remember what a cat looks like, but decent results nonetheless. Then we moved next week on to guns. And same process, start with really simple shapes with a small thumbnail, and then refine and adjust as you go along. And every iteration reinforces it, the uh, information in your brain, so you can remember how to draw it later. Um, 
Something that's kind of fun about drawing is you go into hyper observation mode. And anytime you draw something, if you ever want to draw it again, you're way more comfortable doing it because you have observed so much of it. And what's interesting about these drawings is this is a finished drawing, this is a finished drawing, this is a finished drawing, because the intention is just to understand the basic shapes on these ones, maybe a little bit more details on these. But I've now drawn this revolver four times in like 15 minutes. So I'm going to be way more comfortable having drawn a revolver in the future if I ever need to draw one because I've literally drawn this so many times already and we're not even at the final render. So we've got two more and then there's um, kind of like a all the way through detail rendered with light. Um, I think the focus this week was uh, handheld objects, guns, and like hands themselves. So I did lots of hand studies. Some of these turned out pretty well, others a little bit looser, crazy. That's the point though. That one's pretty good. Uh, it was a pretty good class all in all. I really enjoyed it. It got me drawing so much more than I was before and learning so much more than I was before on my own. And just having feedback every week was really nice also. And unlike most people, I like being told what to draw <laughs> um, because sometimes it's hard to determine. But if you just give me a direction, I can just sit down and do it. And so that was the nice part about this class is I could literally just sit and draw. And I knew exactly what I should be doing and working on. And then I got feedback on it. And then I just kept going. So lots more guns here. I think we're going backwards now because it's hard to tell with this one. <laughs> Uh, here's a Derringer. I really like this gun. It's pretty pretty interesting. But drawing this way in multiple iterations is uh, very useful. I feel like I've drawn some of these subjects like hundreds of times just because I've drawn them seven times. It's one of my favorite drawings I've ever done, I think. I don't know why. It just works really well. So yeah, kept going. Um, later in, we I started trying to focus on um, the purpose of this drawing is to show the cup and how a hand interacts with it. It's not to draw a perfect hand. Um, so I don't need to spend all this time rendering out all the fingers. You can kind of just lump them together into big shapes. So you'll see in here some of these hands that look more like a mitten because the goal is just to show how the hand interacts with the cup, not the actual hand. So same thing here, mittens. The reason I switched to tone paper, by the way, is because we got highlight capabilities now. And then we moved on to drawing uh, land animals. So the process here is pretty similar, basic shapes, find where the joints are. We did like skeletal studies from a side and a three quarter view. And then uh, basically you still do that same study, find all the, the bones and joint points, look for big shapes like triangles and whatnot, and then put the body on top of it. I might in the future go a little bit deeper into this area because I can remember what the bones look like, but not what the cat looks like because the muscle groups are really interesting. So I might try to then do another set of studies that are more about the shape language of the, the muscles if I wanted to go super in depth. So the, the process is pretty much the same for all these animals I'm about to show you. And then I end at a final product. Lots of preliminary studies. I struggled, especially during this week of land animals with falling off the page. I just could not draw small enough for some reason. I've gotten a lot better at it lately, but just a month ago, I was just kept falling off the page. It was driving me crazy. 
and then it would affect my drawing because I would try to like squash it so it would fit. But we eventually arrived. So just that one animal, like I've drawn a horse now like 12 times. I don't think I'd ever drawn a horse before that. <laughs> Some really cool ones, like my favorite animal now after drawing this. Fun thing too is like when you sketch, it's not just about making an image, it's also about understanding the animal and the world. And so taking lots of notes and things will help you recall the visual information. It's kind of like a form and function thing. If you understand the function, you'll understand and remember the visual details. So in this instance, it's sternum like doesn't really close like its rib cage doesn't close together very much like ours does it's very open and splayed out and that's because it can eat a ton and so its stomach literally expands and like drags on the floor because its ribs allow it to so it can eat like 80 percent of its body weight yeah so you can see its stomach kind of sags down pretty fun here's a couple animals from memory. There's a, a bump head. Horse did not go so well. <laughs> Vampire squid. Remember that one really well. And a Komodo dragon. And then I think I have this drawing which I've shared before. A Sokotano. And I'm going to keep this over here because because I had recently drawn this I noticed something really interesting with another animal. So now we're moving on to the final sketchbook. Um, if I had been drawing, this isn't even all the drawings I did in this time period, which is crazy to me, but if all of them were all in one book at one time of this size, I probably could have filled four sketchbooks in two months, which kind of blows my mind. That's a lot of drawing and a lot of paper, which is expensive. So I drew some squirrels and I think I drew a toad or a frog. Um, but then I drew this Canadian lynx. And this is uh, kind of where it's interesting because this is sort of an application of sketching is finding uh, links between uh, real world subjects and more fictional designs like this alien from Star Wars. And so basically all of this stuff that I'm drawing is giving me fuel to power new ideas, new designs. And so when I was drawing this links and doing like some head studies, it seemed so familiar to me, and I couldn't figure out why until I did some more head studies. And I realized that it has these tufts of fur that come down and have stripes on them. These tufts of fur that come up the top like little horns, and then a bunch of white markings on its face. And I was like, what have I drawn recently just like that? And the answer is a Sokotano. So I don't have a for sure answer, but I would wager that whoever designed this character is familiar with this animal and incorporated the design into her design. So that's, that was pretty cool realization I made. Let's see, we got a bear. And then we started doing cars. That was the uh, final, final week was drawing cars. I've drawn a lot of cars before this class. I've not drawn a lot of animals. So these work pretty well. And at this point, I was getting a lot better at proportion. Stuff wasn't falling off the page as much. And I was also trying to think about practicing composition just in my sketchbook pages. Um, normally, sketching is just like one drawing at a time, you know? But these are actually just like a package of information. If you think about each one of these as like a prompt to give to a sculptor or a 3D modeler, it um, makes you think a lot harder about how you're making your page look. And so these car drawings are laid out in a way that is kind of satisfying. You can kind of track the progression of the drawing and the information in a spiral on this one. Same with this one, kind of have like a, a track down the page. Same thing, big spiral. Did some color studies as well, just for my own. Wasn't required, but just wanted to really study and expand as much as I could. I also learned that I really like these old cars. They're super fun to draw. They're, 
crazy looking. It's nuts that people rode around in these things powered by airplane engines with no seat belts or horn. That's probably my favorite one from the week. It's a really cool car. It's got pop up and down headlights. One of the first cars to ever have that. Um, then I drew some little sporty cars, race cars. Here's my van. And then I did some studies of the Lamborghini Countach. And that was the end of the class, but I've still been drawing in that method and working on things. So, um, there's a hummingbird study I did. And I actually have been incorporating a little more color lately. Found these fun watercolor markers. Really enjoy. And did an excavator. I've been trying to draw robots better. So this is like the closest thing to a robot we have in the real world. Besides actual like robotics. But I'm thinking like big walking mechs and stuff. So you want these big, big joints and pieces of metal. So I thought I'd do a study of something in the real world that can give me, like I was saying, more fuel for my ideas. And here's Toad. So uh, if you've read my previous blog post, you probably know I'm going to be signing up again for Peter Hunt's class. The next one is a extension class. So you have to have taken this class, but it lets you... Hi, Torb. What's up, dude? If you've taken this class, you can join that class, and it expands to a bunch of other topics like quickly sketching environments and architecture, military vehicles. So it should be pretty fun. I'm gonna keep filling these books at an alarming rate, drawing all sorts of things. Yeehaw.